Welcome back, Love Tribe. It's Tracy with TR's Tarot Talk, 1111. So I owe an apology to Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius because it has taken me so long to get these videos up. I was using my new iPhone to get the overhead view, and it really does look nice, and I like the format, but it's a very, very slow, arduous um, upload. It takes forever for them to upload. And it's put me, not just that, but other things in my life has put me very far behind on these Zodiacs. So in the interest of getting them out quickly, I'm using my laptop, which goes literally uploads within a half an hour versus my phone. It takes like two hours. Um, also, I've had a lot of illness around here. My son's been sick again. Not sure what it is, but he's got vomiting, diarrhea kid stuff. He's 12. And so, you know, I've had a lot on my plate, but anyhow, enough with the apologies. You guys love me. I'm sure you're fine. I just, you know, I have a sense of duty and I feel a bit of guilt when I get behind on things. So today is Monday. I, I have so many videos to get out. I really want to do the pick a pile reading too. So this is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Um, you guys, if you're new here, please take time to read my description box. All of the extendeds for my 12 zodiacs that are usually up by the first, there will be extendeds to these over in Patreon. Um, Patreon is, so to have these extendeds, it's $4.44 a month versus renting or buying them on uh, Vimeo, which can get expensive, right? I'm not here to rake anybody across the coal, literally. So um, if you're interested, you can find that over in Patreon. The link is in the description box below. If you resonate with being a high-level soulmate or a twin flame, sorry, I forgot to shut the ringer off on my phone. If you resonate with being a twin flame or a high-level soulmate, then um, you might want to join Patreon at the 1111. Over there, we're doing a 100-day journaling challenge because uh, Mars and Venus are currently in, in sync with one another, which is divine masculine, divine feminine energy. And this journaling challenge is meant to help us to get to know ourselves in a much in, more intimate, deep way. Because you got to know what you don't want in order to know what you do want, <laughs> right? So anyhow, if you're interested in that, if you think you're on that journey, then please check that out. These readings here are going to be you and a person on your heart and mind. If you're completely single, these are not geared toward singles this month. These are geared toward people who are already kind of in a thing. Um, if you're a single, I will be doing a pick a pile reading for singles each uh, month so that you guys also get readings. Um, but my mission here is to help the twin flames or high level soulmates that are on an ascension journey. So that's where I focus a lot of my attention. Uh, but that doesn't mean if, if you don't resonate with that, you can't find content here. Just check out my playlist with all my pick a pile readings. Okay. And watch for that, uh, pick a pile for singles. All right. So anything else, just the normal. If you want a personal private reading, this is a collaborative reading. This is, I'm reading the collective. So there will be messages here for you, but they may not be exactly your message. It, you know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If you feel that you need a personal reading, please reach out. Everything you need is in the description box below. And it... A personal reading is geared toward you and your person or your situation. It doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be your job, anything you want to know about, but it's specific to you. All right, so let's get into your reading. I'm sorry for the view. I will hold up each card for you so that you know what it is. And um, I'm going to start much earlier next month to get these out so that they can be out on time and allow for, for mishaps because my son's been sick and I was up half the night. He, I got such a mess to clean up today. He's been th 
throwing up everywhere. So I want to get these done and get it finished for you because you guys have been waiting. All right. So how this is going to go is I'm using this Animal Oracle deck by Colette Baron reed And we're going to see uh, whatever spirit plucks out of the deck is your person's current energy in the month of March. And the bottom of the deck is the potential for or the um, energy that we're moving into or that your person is moving into. Then I'm going to take a look at your person's thoughts, feelings, and intentions towards you. And then we're going to get advice for the month. Then I'll take it over to the extended and we will go much deeper into it. So you guys got two cards for your person's current energy. And then we'll take the bottom of the deck. Okay. So your first card out is number 63, Vulture Spirit. It says nothing is wasted. It's a number nine. So your person is at the end of a cycle, which actually makes sense. A lot of these videos this month uh, these relationships are kind of reaching a pivoting point, as they should, on whether it's time to separate and go our own ways for a while to do more healing or, or to gain more wisdom and experience, or if we are ready to come together and learn these things in a union state. So there's a lot of nines coming up this month. You know, people who are at the end of some kind of a recognition, realization, and possibly even other circumstances in their life that is ending. So vulture spirit, think about the vulture, guys. The vulture is nature's way. It's God's way of cleaning up toxic stuff that really can cause illness. I mean, think about dead carcasses, right? As they start to deteriorate, they release gases and things that are not pleasant to smell, feel, touch, be around, could even cause disease. And so how appropriate that spirit or God creates ways in nature of cleaning all that up for us. And so there is something here that your person knows has died, right? I mean, it already has to be dead for the vulture to show up. So something has ended in your person's life or awareness. It could be a belief system. It could be another uh, relationship. It could be a job. It could be a home living situation. Whatever it is, it's, it's over with. It's done. And so they're realizing the lessons that were in that. Why was it there? Why did they experience that? What can they take from that? because nothing is wasted. Everything has purpose and meaning. And so it feels like your person's gone through some kind of a, a ending and they're picking through the rubble to see what can be salvaged. What can I take from this? What was its purpose? And they could be clearing it right? Cleaning, getting rid of things, tying up loose ends, bringing something into a cleaner state. And then, and, and you guys are the only ones so far that I think have gotten two cards for your person's current energy. So next we have the electric eel spirit, it's a number six. So whatever is ended is now being balanced out. It's being 
balance. Six is the number of harmony and balance. It says, bring your ideas to life. So what usually happens in our lives when we have a dramatic ending of some sort? If something, you know, leaves our awareness, we usually clean up the mess. We, we tie up loose ends. We, we find closure. And then we start because energy is like water. It always seeks to fill and to level off, to balance out. I've used this analogy a million times if you're one of my returning viewers, which if you are, thank you so much for being here. You guys are my support system, really, on my own personal journey. I came here to help myself and to help others in the process. I'm on this journey. So if you go out into the middle of a pond or a lake or any place there's a big body of water, and let's say you take a five-gallon bucket and you scoop five gallons of water out, take it to the shoreline, dump it on a bush. If you're going to go back to where you took it and expect there to be a void, you're going to quickly realize that that will never happen. Never. Not unless there's some kind of a dam or walls or something to hold back the energy, which we create, by the way. We create a lot of walls to hold back new energies from coming in, usually out of fear that the new energy could leave us or abandon us or die like the one that it's replacing. But it feels like your person isn't really in a wall building stage in their development or healing. They're in a, they're, embracing the new water, the new energy, and they're electrifying it. They're, they're putting energy into it, coating it with intentions, bringing their ideas to life. They've got a plan and they are literally charging the energy and the water that is flowing in to balance out whatever created the void. Now, where are they moving in the month of March? Where are they headed? We have number 56, which breaks down to a number 11, spider spirit. Your person is planning for the future and they're weaving their dreams. Make your dreams real. So your person that, you know, it's master number 11. They're mastering their emotions, mastering their experience. They're coming up with a plan. They're bringing ideas and dreams into manifestation. They are embracing the change. That's very beautiful. Underneath that is number 66. It's white raven spirit. This is a very, very rare card in this deck. The white raven is all about magic. It's trusting in the magic. And so I like your person's energy. Of course, you know, you're Sagittarius. You guys are all about peace and harmony and, and balance, right? Balance. So this could very well play out from your own perspective. This could be your energy in the month of March. Because oftentimes in these kind of relationships, especially if they're spiritual in nature, we tend to mirror each other. And sometimes in opposition, you know. So maybe if your person is embracing change and coding or, or putting energy into the future, weaving their future plans and trusting in the magic, you could be polarized and you could be having the opposite effect right now. You could be feeling, you could be feeling the opposite. You could be feeling, you know, mourning, grieving, sorrow, doubt, right? Not trusting, having doubts in the future, unable to make your dreams come true or bring your 
ideas to life. It's funny how that happens, but we've always got the yin and the yang, the positive, the negative. And usually if a couple who are on this journey are out of sync with each other, it's because one has one set of beliefs and energy, which is in the negative polarity, and the other one is in the positive. And then sometimes we roll reverse, right? It's like there's days or times or months when you're in the positive and they're in the negative. And that's why there's not union yet. You're not in union because you can't seem to, to synchronize that divine timing, right? And you guys are the sign of the temperance, the, the divine balance between negative and positive polarities. <clears throat> Masculine, feminine, doing versus, or giving versus receiving. So check your energy. Where are you on a vibrational scale of one to 10? And can you release the past, clean up the debris, tie up loose ends, and then electrically charge the energy that is replacing what is cleared and making a plan and weaving your dreams with faith and trust in the magic for the future. If you can get in that, so, because this could be your energy, this could be your person's, figure out where you are. Because if you're at the opposite pole of this and this is their energy, then if you want to find union, you need to match this energy. This is good energy. If this is your energy and your person's in the opposite, there isn't a whole lot you can do except for to hold the energy, right? Charge the energy and allow your person whatever they need in order to raise their frequency to match yours, all right? So let's take a look at the tarot. I think I wanna use this deck. All right, knock, knock, who's there? Not you, then who? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and all cross watchers for the month of March in love and connection. All right, what? Uh-oh, no, uh, we ain't ready. Ooh, nurture, there's the empress, bada, bada, bing. Okay, so we both need to be in this vibration. So I'm going to shuffle that back in because I wanted to ask a question. Although spirit probably already knows what question I'm going to ask. So just, you know, duly noted, we had the empress come out. So spirit, what is Libra or my viewer, because it could be a cross watcher, uh, what are what is their person thinking about my viewer in the month of March? What are their current thoughts about my viewer? <laughs> okay, so my guess is that uh, you or your person put an end to your current cycle is what I'm hearing. I don't think it's over forever. You guys get to choose that. But when I see the temperance card, that's divine timing. It's divine healing. It is your energy, Sag. And so sometimes we just need to take a break, right? We need to go after our own hopes, our own dreams, our make your dreams real. So Spirit is saying that for this group, the viewers watching this, if you want to find alignment with your person, you got to be in the same frame of energy and that is pursuing your own dreams pursuing your own because the eight of cups is walking away from something you've invested a lot of emotion into and yet it, it hasn't fulfilled your dreams or your wishes right your wishes haven't been fulfilled and so i kind of feel like your person has chosen just for the time being, because this is a timing card, to withdraw and walk away from whatever they are sharing with you emotionally in order to stabilize their life, in order to, to clear something else out 
and clean it up and tie it up. Now, if this, if you didn't get two cards, if you had just got the eight of cups, I would say, well, perhaps, you know, the two of you are meant to co-create separately. And you get to choose that, right? Because justice, right now we're balancing the scale of justice. And I mean, it's it's a very karmic time right now. We've got Venus and Mars, uh, which is divine masculine, divine feminine, kind of traveling together. But what I'm seeing for you guys is it's like you're on these this path and there's some trees in between you. You're both headed in the same direction. You're going to end up in the same place with the temperance card eventually. But there's some stuff that needs to be cleared out in order for the two of you to merge. Okay? And that is what your person is currently working on. And it's, they're thinking, this could be projection too. They might be thinking you walked away to create balance because this is their thoughts about you. So take it as it resonates. Their current thoughts are somebody needs to walk away to create balance. And they could initiate this, which it looks like if this is their energy and not yours, they're the one initiating the separation. But they're doing it for the right reasons. They're doing it to, to literally choose themselves and their happiness and what they want to get it figured out, to, to dream about the future and to get right with what they want. And again, this could be them thinking that you've done that. I don't think so, though. I mean, you could be marrying each other. You could both be doing it. That would be great because if you were both doing it effectively, then union is just a matter of alignment. It's kind of like your person and you need to figure out what makes you happy. What do you want? What are your dreams for the future? And and make a plan and head for that. And then this magical thing seems to happen. Trust in the magic. That because you are on a journey together, you chose each other as partners in this journey, then on a very core level, you both want the same things. And so if there's confusion about what you want, then taking time to, to reflect, that's why we're doing the 100 day journaling challenge over on Patreon, is to get right with what you want, to peel back all those layers of pretense, and all those um, masks that we wear in different situations that aren't authentically us, and to really get to know us. And it's like, okay, we know how to please everybody else. We know how to do that. But we've never really looked at what makes us happy. What do we want? What dreams do we want to make come true? And so this is kind of like uh, the energy I'm feeling that's necessary for the two of you to trust the magic. When you go, you might think that you're going off left and they're going off right. It could very well feel like something very painful has ended between the two of you. It might even feel like forever, but it's not. And how I know that is with the temperance card, because the temperance card brings balance and unification. They merge. They merge. And so it's okay to walk a different path toward what you need to discover about your own dreams, your own happiness, and trust that you guys chose each other on this journey. And so at a very core level, you both want the same things, but you just have to get rid of the past and focus on what you want now and then go after it. And what's going to happen is as you're pursuing your dreams, they're pursuing their dreams, you know, you're going to merge because you both share a core dream. And so your past will cross again. That's the magic that you need to trust in is that although you're traveling and can't see each other, 
you're both really heading to the same place. All right, how does Sagittarius's or my viewers person feel in their heart space? Hanged man. Your person is trying to gain clarity. They're bringing ideas to life. They're making their dreams real. They're introspective. They are looking at things from different viewpoints. Soul searching. Trying to gain clarity and enlightenment. And it is a waiting card. So isn't the temperance card. So in their heart space, the person's trying to really really look at their feelings for you. Trying to understand them and trying to find out where they fit in their future. Where do you fit in their future? Hmm. We'll clarify these. And what are their intentions toward my viewer in the month of March? What are their intentions toward my viewer in the month of March? The intentions. What is my viewer's person's intentions toward them in the month of March? Spirit, clear, concise messages. Their intentions in the month of March. Their intentions in the month of March. Yeah, see, awaiting results. Your person has been investing someplace that did not bear fruit. It didn't. But now they're searching their heart. And they're holding two flowers in their right hand. I love the way spirit speaks to me in these videos. So your person has had a lot of relationships, it feels like, that never bore fruit. And they invested, 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 invested. So they could be currently in a situation where their investments have never truly brought them personal satisfaction. It's a dead tree. But the idea, the seed, still lives in their heart. So this could mean many things. This could mean that the two of you have been in a relationship before and it wasn't nurtured or cared for the way it should have been. And so it never came to fruition, never really came into a union state. Or this could be past relationships or maybe even a current relationship that your person is in. That they are not seeing any, any growth, any... It's just dead. And so they're looking at life. They've got two flowers. I wish the lighting was better. I'm using natural lighting. Your person is looking to the future, making their dreams come true, electrifying, bringing their ideas to life. This, this apple in the middle of their heart space is green. It never ripened. So take what resonates. This could be them with you. Maybe you guys have been trying for a long time and it just never really got to that, that union, that place of ripeness, that place of abundance where it happens. But if that's true, it's because one or both of you didn't invest, didn't tend it, didn't nurture it, didn't care for it. Now, if this is a different situation, 
or past situations, if you're pers if you know you're in like a third party situation, or if there is a past um, situation that your person was invested in. I mean, because this is an investment card. They invested. It just never grew. It just somebody didn't nurture it the right way. So we're going to clarify that. Bottom of the deck is the two of cups. And I was thinking with the two little flowers in the hand that your person really is thinking about merging with the temperance. I just think they might have some past relationships to heal from past, you know, whatever this vulture stuff was, and this could be different. It will be different for everyone. If you want a personal reading, we can get down to the bottom of this. But being a collective reading, I'm just going to get energy. So let's clarify these and see what's really happening. All right. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not you, then who? Sagittarius's person. My viewer's person. All right. My viewer's person. Why are they walking away? Why are they thinking that they're walking away or someone else is? Why is the Eight of Cups and Temperance card here? Clarify their mind. Ooh. This is the page of swords though. Okay. So your person is confused. They're questioning. They're seeking. They're possibly watching you walk away. They might think that they've lost you. This could be them viewing you as walking away, or this could literally be them walking away in order to learn things, to gain clarity to, again, what do I want? What do I need? What would make me happy? Can I get one more on that, please? One more on the thoughts. One more for thoughts. Okay, so look, we had flowering, so that's Empress energy in this deck. In this deck, it's the Queen of Pentacles. So your person, oh, bottom of the deck. Well, no, I'm not doing bottom of the deck. Thank you, Spirit. All right, so we got the Two of Cups again. Heavily, heavily, heavily on your person's mind. It says friendliness. I'm thinking that the two of you might actually have a have roots already. I don't know why, but I feel like you might have actually even been together for a while. Maybe they friend zoned you or maybe you friend zoned them because we do have the word friendliness, but it is the two of cups. They, and in their heart space is this apple that they're wanting to ripen. So I kind of feel like your person might have friend zoned you or you friend zoned them. I don't think you're completely in separation. I think that it's sporadic. You know, there's probably very little conversation or texts or or coming together. But again, I'm getting this storyline in my head of two different pathways, two different experiences that are about to merge. As soon as you and your person can learn the lessons from the past and realize what you want and go after it. And you might be thinking, but I want them. Well, if you had them and it looks like you did at one point, if both of you are just out of balance and you're not 
able to fulfill your own inner needs, fill your own cup, know what you want, be autonomous, be interdependent, then it, it causes separation again, right? So we've got the two of cups and it does feel like both of you are, are opposites, right? You're on two different journeys, you know, two different pathways right now. But I do believe you're probably still friends. You're probably still talking nice to each other because there's a lot of balance here. With this page of swords, this could very well be your person keeping an eye on you or you're keeping an eye on them. But then we've got trust, and it's right here. Trust in the magic. This is the Knight of Cups. Your person wants to trust you. They want what you've sewn together to grow, flower. They want to invest. They see you as somebody... And this, could, like I said, you could be inspiring. You could be doing all of this, inspiring your person. You might be flowering. You might be in a very high vibration. And if you are, just let me tell you, if you're in a very high vibration, union's not too far away for you guys because your person's vibration is extremely high. I mean, they're, they're cleaning up the past. They're learning. They're looking at what they want and they're actually manifesting it. They're sending energy, energy to it. You could very well be flowering, you know, stable, secure. The queen of pentacles, she's, she's capable. She has her shit together. She is nurturing and, and, you know, it's, it's really nice energy. If you're in this energy, your person seeing you trust the universe, taking leaps of faith, maybe you walked away, maybe they walked away, but it doesn't matter because you're both going to the same place. That's what I'm seeing. You could be inspiring your person to follow your role model, or if you're in the opposition right now, if you're feeling opposite to this high frequency, then your person is taking a journey. They friend zoned you, walked away, and they're taking a journey to find out what they want, taking a leap of faith to plant seeds for their future. But honestly, when I see this flowering and this awaiting results, it's almost like your person has an inner knowing that if they just take care of their own heart, their own healing, their own dreams, they know that they're going to catch up. I don't think this is permanent if this is a true separation. All right, what is... Can we clarify, please, the hanged man in the heart space for how my viewer's person is feeling about them in the month of March? Why is the hanged man here? Clarify the hanged man for feelings, please, toward my viewer. Receptivity. They're getting downloads. Literally getting downloads. This is the Queen of Cups. Can I get one more? What are they receiving? What are they receiving? Turning in. They're literally, okay, so the Four of Cups is, is a divine hand comes out of nowhere and hands this person what they want. But if they haven't done any soul searching by turning within to realize what they want, they might miss an opportunity to have it. 
they're a little confused right now about what they truly want. And so they're in hanged man and opening up intuitively, receiving downloads on what they want by going within so that they can recognize that cup, so that they can take that cup. And to make a decision that brings balance. I don't usually look at the bottom of the deck when I'm clarifying, but it peeked at me and it, it felt like it fit. So your person has a decision to make about what they want, what they want versus what they don't want. And that can show up and manifest in many different ways, okay? Take what resonates. It could be another relationship they're in. It could be a job they're in that they don't like. It could just be clearing and healing out old relationships that they haven't found closure in. It could be living out fears for the future or commitment because of past hurts. It, it really is a collective reading. So, um when I take this over to Patreon, it becomes a much more um, pinpointed because there's only a couple of people that will be watching out of 12. I have 22 subs over there because it's relatively new. So out of 22 people and 12 Zodiacs, it's a very small percentage that will be watching this. So if you're interested and you want to join over there, you will get a much clearer picture there because there's less energy I'm reading, and I will be clarifying. But it does appear that your person is trying to figure out what they want because spirit is giving it to both of you. It's right there, coming out of the sky. This is a gift from the divine. But if you keep comparing it to the three cups that are spilled, if you keep looking at it like it's one more of the same, you could very well miss an opportunity to have the very thing that you desire. So on this journey, we have to kind of learn what we don't want so that we know what we do want and then we can grab it, right? Seize the day, seize the opportunity. So, so far it feels like separation in the month of March with magic happening. Magic is happening behind the scenes. Why is their intentions, the seven of pentacles, what are they waiting for? All right, we've got the five of pentacles, the outsider. Your person has been hurt. They could be, this could be finances because we've got pentacles, right? Seven of pentacles, five of pentacles. Your person could very well be financially struggling and they they're not proud of that. So they want to clean that up. They want to chase their dreams. They want to kind of get a firm foundation beneath them before they, you know, collaborate or come into a union with you. Or this could be abandonment, right? Abandonment wounds and that being in the headspace, you know, it could be a thing for you guys. Both of you might have self-worth issues or abandonment wounds. This is feeling like you don't belong, like the black sheep of the family or the leper, like people are better than you. It can also be money, feeling like other people have more than you do. And you don't, you know, your person could have integrity. They could be like, well, I don't want to live off of their abundance, their work that they've done, their flowering. And I'm not. Or they're healing and I'm not. For some of you. Can I get one more on this five of pentacles, please? With the seven of pentacles for their intention. Intensity. There's the knight of wands. Your person wants to have something. They want to have a foundation beneath them before they come towards you.
but they are coming towards you. I can see, I can feel it. Five of Pentacles, by the way, underneath the Two of Cups on the bottom of this deck. Feeling alone. Your person Your person's doing a lot of inner work and they need to do it alone. We had the hermit, right? They don't like the separation, just so you know. They don't like it. Their desire is to come towards you. I hate this lighting. Their desire is to come towards you. But they have to kind of understand Can I get one more on this Five of Pentacles? I know it's a general reading, but one more, please, to get more clarity on this Five of Pentacles here in their intentions. Temperance again. Temperance again. There is things in their life that are out of balance, and they want to build a foundation and they want to balance out their life because I think you have possibly only take that if it resonates if you haven't and they're in a very high vibration then they're waiting for you to find your balance and they friend zoned you is what it feels like. I don't know why I keep feeling energy over here, guys. I haven't looked at these, but I'm, I would be willing to bet there's something here about patience, divine timing, balance. Something here. Your person's coming. with a seed for the future. They want to invest. They just got to get right. They got to mature and get to that place where they know exactly what it is they're investing in. They got to know what they want. Four of Wands, union. They're trying to decide if they want to accept that divine cup to receive, right? Receptivity. Receive the cup. So they know what seed is the one that they want to plant for the future to make their dreams real. And the sun card. What will they plant together because they want a partner in this. They don't want to do this alone. They want a partner. Your person wants commitment, possibly marriage, but they have some maturing to do, or you do. They could be viewing you as the person that needs to mature. But that's what's going to bring union. You might need... And happiness, great, great happiness. Two of Wands, you both need to just go on your own journey. Go toward the possibilities. Trust in the magic. You're going to end up in the same place because you share the same core desire. Good reading, guys. Super good reading. So it's vibration, 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 because we've got temperance. Temperance is the alchemy of negative and positive polarity. It's the, neg or the um, alchemization of action and intent, giving and receiving. And in order to do that, you really got to know what you want, because the universe is seeking to give it to you. And your higher selves 
chose each other to journey together with so you have the same outcome. You came into this place with the same outcome. Now that outcome for some people is to learn how to heal trauma from the past and to become more authentic. And then they choose to separate and that's for good. And that's okay because both people will be on board with that. Both people, it's not going to be one person hurt and abandoned and the other person healed and on their own. That's not what these kind of relationships are here for. They're here to balance the scales. And so your person's higher self is telling you they want commitment, stability. They want to come together. They want union and happiness. Now we just need to get you on board <laughs> or vice versa. Somebody here is, <clears throat> somebody here is already in alignment with what they want. They're actually creating it. The other person isn't quite participating yet because they have some maturing to do. And they need to go back to that childlike state before all of the past circumstances tainted them or broke their heart. I like this. Let's get you advice and then I'm going to take this over to the extended. So we have deep diver diving into a task. And we see that with the eel, your person. And this could be advice for you. It's a 10, right? We're going from the 9 to the 10. Diving in, what your person and you need to dive into is really healing and clearing the past. Clean it up. Be like the vulture. Go through the debris. Take what you can take from it. Learn from it. And then chuck the rest, right? Let, let the divine send something else to process the rest. Diving into a task. I'm going to read this. I can take my time with your guys' reading now because I'm using the computer and it will upload fast. So, deep diver, embracing risk, diving into a task to discover new things. It's easy to play in the shallow where the waters are clear and you can see all that glitters by your feet. Anyone can venture here. There is little risk nothing to discover, and no dark secret, nothing that you can't already perceive. The treasure has long been picked away, replaced by a gentle certainty. In the shallow river is safety with no surprises. Ah, but that's not who's calling you now. The deep river is calling to you and inviting you to take the plunge with him. You can't see the bottom, but you must swim into the dark depths to find the mystery that eludes you now. He knows where the pearls lie underneath the ancient sands. You are called to look beyond the surface of things for your answer. Let your intuition propel you into the water, allowing your memories to swirl around you and your emotions to well up as you face the unknown. Your curiosity will be your greatest guide Page of Swords. You'll surely discover something wondrous to bring back to everyone who is waiting by the shore. But only you will truly know the value of your discovery. Are you willing to do the work? To dive in? Make the commitment to see it through? If you are, you'll be amazed and come back with the treasure. Big, big lesson. Jeez, we could end it right there. Your person's doing shadow work or they're standing by watching you do shadow work and their higher self kind of understands that you need time. Both of you 
may be walking in different directions right now. But Spirit's trying to give you some, some information here that eventually you're coming together. Merging. Temperance, merging. But there is shadow work to be done here in order to come into alignment. And somebody is now on board. Somebody's actually doing the work. So take it as whoever, put you in whatever place there is. But tens are about endings. It's about taking a look at all the stuff that's beneath the surface. Trying to find that ace of pentacles, the one thing that really, really, truly is what you want to manifest. And your person doesn't want to do this alone. They want to do it together. The person has been fighting against their baser instincts for a while now. Wanting the wrong things. And Spirit's telling them, choose your battles. Choose wisely. Don't focus on the things you don't want. Focus on what you do want. And when I first started my journey, I didn't have any clue what that was. I still struggle. I'm still figuring it out. I had invested my life into so many other people's stories that I stopped writing my own and was just living theirs. And this journey has brought me to a place where I'm now writing my own script. I'm making my own dreams. I'm bringing my ideas to life. And I'm learning what I want, what makes me happy. And it feels like you guys are doing the same thing. Success. I know that there is no greater goal than to love. Your person could very well have forgotten their own love. In or, you know, people pleasing and such. And forgetting what, what makes me light up. What lights me up, electric eel? What makes me want to weave the future, to dream a bigger dream, to pursue magic again, like we do when we're children, right? We, we, we all believe in magic when we're kids. We witness it. We're outside playing. That's why our kids today need to get outside. They need to get their feet dirty, their hands dirty. They need to explore nature and all of its wonders. Nature spirits teach a lot to children. So this is moving towards success, just so you know. As long as you guys figure out what makes you tick, what, make, what do you love? Sometimes we focus too much on who we love. And instead of what, what we love, what dreams do we want to have? Because you can love everybody else all day long, but if you don't love yourself, then you're always out there letting other people break your heart or make your heart, and, and everything's invested in them. And so if they show up, you're happy and you're in love, and if they don't show up, you're sad and you're broken. When you show up for yourself, it's much quicker to heal the external wounds because they... They never really got to grow deep inside of you because you have already have roots there, dreams there, desires there to turn back on when those ones out there are, are not showing up or not doing what they should do. What's your advice? <laughs> there we go. Friendship. I think your person's friend zoned you until the magic happens until the realization comes. This person's deciding whether or not they want that cup and they, they absolutely want it. They just want, they're just not sure what's in it. They want to put something in the cup. 
Nurture the bonds of friendship within your relationship and your love life will dramatically improve. Friendship. Friendship. I felt it. I kept going over here like this. Balance. Are you kidding? Come on, Sag. You guys are working hard on, on your own archetype, aren't you? One person is giving too much in this relationship. I feel like that was what was out of balance. And I think that that caused one or both of you to take a left turn. <laughs> or one went left, one went right. But but the journey you're going to be on is going to bring you right back together. Coming together. Love yourself first. Thank you, Spirit. I love, I absolutely love the way I read. These readings aren't for everybody because not everybody's on this kind of a journey, but those who are really, really get it. And that's who I'm reading for. And if that's a small group, that's a small group. I'm okay with that. They are a small group. They are the changers for the future. You guys have a mission. And even if that mission is just to fall madly in love in a balanced, harmonious way so that other people want what you have, and then ask you, how'd you do it? How'd you find them? How are you creating such wealth and abundance and happiness and joy and love? Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. I think you guys are, are going in two separate di directions, or they feel like they're separate, but they're actually coming together. Like you took a left and they took a right. And then spirit guided you to take a right and them to take a left. And now you don't even realize it, but you're coming together through this whole alchemization because it's all about alchemy. You've got balance, 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 right? The 11 is the number of the divine masculine, divine feminine. It's duality. It's positive, negative, up, down, in, out, over, under, you, me. When we go through the portal, they merge and two become one. Beautiful reading, guys. So your advice for the month of March is do you and do what you love. Because if you keep doing people pleasing, if you keep taking, letting your journey take you away from you, then you're off roaming somewhere and your person can't find you. In order for you guys to come together, you must go after what you love, what lights you up, what dreams you have, because you share those. And you will come together in the future in order to, I mean, you will merge together in the future when both of you find that soul song, that inner soul song you share. So take a deep dive. Know that this is going to be successful. Be okay with being a friend. Nurture the friendship. Don't overgive. Don't overtake. Just kind of reciprocate. Wait for them to reach out or reach out when you feel called, when you're divinely guided. And just no running, no chasing, just on your path and your purpose toward you because they kind of represent that, right? When you find you, you're going to find your person because that's what happens. All right. So I love you. This is good. Just take all the information you got from this. Do self work. Love yourself first. Do your shadow work. Deep dive. Clear out the past. Daydream about the future. Figure out who you are and what you want. And then pursue it because when you get to the end, not the end, but when you get to that place of knowing what you want and they get to the place of knowing what they want, that's when you're going to merge to become one. So it looks in the month of March like you're probably going to communicate with each other a little bit. You're going to be friend zoned. You're going to be, you know, kind of nice to each other or you should be. That's the advice in order to bring balance. 
and to know that love is the only way to succeed and self-love is imperative to the union. So wherever you are on your journey, if you feel like you're wandering lost, get back to you, get back to you. If you need, join our, our um, community where we're doing the 100 day journaling challenge because we are really through questions, right? Because I've, I've got a deck of cards. Here was today's, I'll just give you a sample. What is a, or how have you changed this past year? And you journal it. And you go deep, you dive deep. Where have you changed? How have you changed? Why have you changed? What helped you make that change? Why did you want that change? And we do this every single day for 100 days. And by the end of this 100 days, I'm hoping that we finally know exactly who we are at our very core and what we want in our very core. So... I love you and I will see you hopefully over in Patreon. But if you choose to leave this here, then I will see you on the first of next month. And we'll do an energy check-in and see how you're doing on this. Okay. I love you guys. If you want a personal private reading, just let me know. Everything you need is in the description box. Oh, by the way, if you followed me all the way through to the end of this, my guess is this resonated. And if this resonated and you are struggling and you need help, please reach out. I would love to do a personal channeling for you to help you on your journey because it's my mission for all of us to find union in order to create the kind of world that we have only dreamt of creating in the past. Okay. So that's my mission work. So um, I will catch you guys later. Namaste.